So recently I've had a bunch of questions asking about what type of editing hardware I use and particularly what type of machine do I do my editing on. So what I thought I'd do is put together a video going through exactly what makes up my edit machine and why I chose these particular components and bits of hardware. So this could be useful for other people that are building or specking a PC specifically for video editing use. I built this PC about eight months ago and I spec'd it and built it specifically for video editing, so for a kind of professional uh, use application. And the type of editing that I'm doing is in Adobe Premiere Pro, typically edit 4K source footage. But I also do work in After Effects, some compositing in After Effects, and work in Photoshop, Audition, and various other Adobe Creative Suite products as well. And so when I came to build this PC, I sort of sat down, had a look at the current state of the hardware, what was available, sort of spec'd and designed myself a machine that's going to be really capable to edit 4K footage, fast render times, and kind of good workflow efficiency. Now, I use this PC pretty much every day. It gets put through its paces, and like I say, I've been using it for eight months now. It's a very quick PC. Uh, it's very efficient for working in Adobe Premiere Pro. I can work across multiple layers of 4K source footage, and render times are quick, performance is quick. Uh, it's very snappy, and I'm very pleased with it. So when I was specking this PC at the time, the highest level platform that available was the Haswell E platform, which is the uses the Core i7 X99 chipset. The specific processor that I was looking at was the Core i7-5820K. It's a six core processor and the Haswell E architecture has the benefit of using six and eight core CPUs. Now, applications uh, like Premiere Pro and other Adobe applications are very good at using uh, multiple cores and multiple threads. And so in order to support that processor, you need an X99 motherboard. And the motherboard that I went with here is the Asus X99S. Uh, it's a full ATX size motherboard, lots of expansion slots, lots of PCI Express slots, lots of USB slots on the rear. Uh, I only run a single GPU in it, but there is the option to add extra GPUs. But it kind of ticked every box that I needed in terms of expansion slots and supporting the particular processor that I was going with. X99 uh, architecture uses DDR4 memory and inside that I've got 32 gigabytes of crucial DDR4. It's PC19200 which runs at 2400 megahertz. Now I'm not kind of too much into RAM speeds. What I was really going for here was a decent amount of RAM and I found that 32 gigabytes is a kind of sweet spot almost of RAM. So when I'm working in Premiere Pro with either one to three sort of layers of 4K source footage, I'll see anything between 14 to 20, 21 gigabytes of, of memory usage. So that 32 gigs is, is kind of enough for Premiere Pro. If I'm in After Effects, I'll often see the full 32 gigs used no problem. And with the, the X99, there is the option to expand up to 64 gigabytes of RAM. There's eight memory slots in there. So for me, I can have that option of adding an extra 32 gigs. I do most of my work in Premiere. After Effects is only a small amount of my kind of workflow. So for me at the moment, 32 gigs is, is fine. But if you need to move up and add in more, then the option there is available too. So cooling the processor is the Corsair H100i GTX, and this is an all-in-one liquid cooler. So it's a 240 mil radiator with dual 120 mil fans on it. I don't get too obsessed over CPU temperatures, but it keeps the PC nice and cool, runs nice and quietly. Uh, for me, it's very much just kind of install and just leave it to do its job, and uh, it seems to do that very well. So moving on to the GPU, which is a critical part of any build, we've got the GeForce GTX 980 Ti. Now the Adobe Creative Suite of products have really kind of moved on in the last few years to really take advantage of the GPU. It used to be just certain things, but now you see much more kind of real-time boost in performance across just working through timelines, the rendering, uh, that can all be passed over to the GPU or the GPU can be utilized for those type of things. So the 980 Ti, which was one of the highest end consumer cards at the time when I was building this PC, seemed the perfect choice. I've actually used a very similar system, which has got a GTX 680 in, which is a couple of generations older. And whilst that provided decent performance, the actual boost of adding in a, a 980 Ti, I was really amazed at how much the Adobe Creative Suite actually takes advantage of this. And I did a quick bit of testing, just ran a few 
uh, GPU monitoring tools and you can really see the GPU load, GPU load boost up when you're, you're rendering or you're adding effects. So the 980 Ti also has six gigabytes of memory and when working across multiple timelines and especially with the 4K footage as well, uh, this is this really comes in handy. Now the other option with a workstation build is the use of a professional graphics card like the Nvidia Quadro series. For me, they are a little bit too expensive and the benefits of kind of professional dedicated drivers and things like that really for me don't offer uh, kind of anything worth having. The GTX 980 Ti that I've been using has been rock stable. I haven't had a single problem with it in the eight months that I've been using and the performance that I get from it for the cost versus a Quadro or professional card uh, really kind of is a no-brainer for me. I think for other applications like CAD-based work, Quadro series cards have more of an advantage, but certainly from the video editing and the Adobe Creative Suite, the top-end consumer-level cards, I think, work just fine. So powering everything in there is an 850 watt EVGA G2 Supernova power supply and this is a gold plus power supply so it runs nice and efficiently. Now there's quite a lot of sort of uh, high-end components in there which are drawing quite a bit of power but there's certainly with an 850 watt power supply there's certainly a lot of headroom there and you always want especially if you're building a, a build like this for professional use you know a decent power supply is absolutely crucial and the, the, the one that I have in there runs very quiet, very cool, very stable, never had any problems with it. And I know that there's enough headroom in there that it's running nice and efficiently as well. In terms of storage, uh, it's all solid state. So there's two drives in there. There's a system drive, which is a 240 gigabyte. It's a SanDisk Extreme Pro. So that houses the OS and then all of the software applications. And then also in there, there's a 960 gigabyte uh, SanDisk Extreme Pro disk as well, which I use as a project drive. So I will work off that drive that houses all the rushes and all the, the, the footage that I'm working on at any one time. And then attached to that as well, I have a Western Digital uh, MyBook Duo uh, sort of all-in-one RAID solution, which then just mirrors that drive as I'm working on it. And then there's also uh, NAS storage and uh, cloud storage as well. So everything is being backed up. Uh, off-site as well. So housing everything is the Corsair Obsidian 450D case. So when specking it, I wanted a case that would sit nicely on a desk without taking up a huge amount of space, but would hold all the components and would have a decent level of airflow. Uh, and I think this case pretty much ticks all those boxes. It's got multiple fans. Uh, I have them set up as two intake fans at the front, a rear exhaust, and then the CPU cooler is actually mounted in the ceiling of that case as well. Plenty of space to work in, uh, nice removable filters. Uh, it also has a side panel with a window in there so you can see the components as well. And it's just a nice sort of subtle finish to it as well. It's got the usual front USB 3 ports, headphone jack, microphone jack, etc. But it's just a nice unassuming case that sits nicely on the desk, doesn't take up too much space, but houses all the components in a nice and sort of uh, space efficient way. So moving on to the monitor, for me this was uh, a very kind of crucial part of the, the whole system and actually about a third of the, the entire budget went on the monitor. Um, this is an LG 31MU97. It's a true 4K monitor, so it's able to display a resolution of 4096 by 2160, as opposed to the UHD specification, which is 3840 by 2160. And this is really useful for me because often the source footage that I'm using, the 4K source footage that I'm using is that 4096 by 2160 resolution. So I know that I can view that in a true kind of 4K one-to-one way on this monitor. It's also a 10-bit panel with a wide color space, so it displays just about the whole of the Adobe RGB color gamut, I think about 99.5% of it. Uh, you've got lookup tables built in and you can display different color spaces just by using the multi-selector built onto the monitor. Now this PC just gets used as a workstation, but obviously with the, the hardware in there, with the likes of the 980 Ti graphics card, it would also be an extremely capable gaming machine as well. And so if you're looking to build a PC for kind of dual usage, uh, you know, it would tick those boxes as well. So that just about wraps up everything that went into the build. And like I say, been using this PC now for about eight months 
and it really hasn't missed a beat. For, for professional workstation, for editing on, uh, it's an absolute dream and I'm, I'm really pleased with it. Uh, if you've got any questions at all, be more than happy to uh, try and answer them. So do drop them in the comments below. And thanks very much for watching.